Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me Elizabeth and I'm going to do a collective reading for you all uh, for the week ahead. So the week of the 27th, today's Sunday the 27th. It's the last week of June and the first week of July and I've been feeling some big energetic shifts uh, just in the last few days. So I wanted to tap into those, uh, show my face, say hello to all of you, everyone who's new to this community, welcome. I'm so thrilled to have all of you here, really and truly, it means the world to me. So um, I started on your July readings today. I did Cancer, I did Leo, Virgo, and Libra. So happy birthday to all of the Cancers out there, the Cancer Collective, I love you so much. And uh, I'll be uploading those today and tomorrow, uh, and then I'll be continuing to make more videos. So I'm just clearing the space, burning a little bit of sage and white copal, frankincense and myrrh, and all of those beautiful things. And let me just uh, give myself a little spray here. Okay. Wonderful. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with a moonology oracle because we are in cancer season and cancer is ruled by the moon so i wanted to get some lunar energy to start i'm going to use some of the decks that i curated for the july readings um maybe not all of them i may pull some different decks depending on where this goes i already have a few decks that uh, are like you know up here that are telling me to use them so all right thank you to the guides the angels the galactic energies, ascended masters, and all beings of the highest love and light who would like to join us for this reading for the collective for the week ahead. Highest and best messages, please. Thank you. All right, let's see what we have here. Beautiful. Luck is on your side. <coughs> Excuse me. New moon in Sagittarius. Um, and it's time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. We've got a full moon in Scorpio, a new moon in Sagittarius. Release the negativity. Luck is on your side. There's changes. The energy is shifting. We go from some of this heavier, you know, very emotional, deeply feeling and transformative Scorpio energy into this lighter, more adventurous, fiery, passionate, creative Sagittarius energy. Nothing against Scorpios. I love Scorpios. I have a North Node in Scorpio. So trust me, I get it. But it is that energy of like the heaviness um, when you're really uh, getting into that transformative energy, really going into your emotional depths. And I feel like that's what was happening uh, with a lot of people. I know with myself, I needed a lot of downtime around that Capricorn full moon. Um, it was heavy. The energy felt very, very heavy. And so it, I felt this shift where it is a new cycle, this new moon energy. Um, so get your arrows pointed this week. Luck is on your side. It's a lucky week coming up. So I will take it and I will claim that for myself. Um, okay. And at the bottom of the deck is um, mutable energy. That's Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces, I believe. Um, mutable. So uh, nothing is set in stone. It means that even if there's something that you feel like, um, you know, sort of like down about, like, you know, nope, that's a done deal. That's the negativity perhaps that you can release. That luck is on your side. There may be some new opportunity or something that you thought was done, gone, buried. It's not going to happen. Uh, Nothing is set in stone, mutable moon. So be flexible this week, be open-minded, okay? Love that, I absolutely love that. So, all right, let's get a message from the wisdom of the oracle and just see what messages we have and then we'll get some tarot pulls. I'll get you an angel message um, and uh, we'll see what else wants to come out tonight. Okay, so thank you. Ooh, yeah, that just went flying out. Beautiful, you guys. Loyal heart, number 35. This could be around a partnership. Um, you know, that there's going to be some kind of a resolution uh, inside of a relationship. Loyal heart. We see the two owls there, the king and the queen. Beautiful, lovely, uh, soulmate energy. You know, if this isn't about a relationship for you, um, if you're in partnership, it's really showing like uh, you guys really are loyal to each other. You, your hearts belong to one another. And uh, you're sitting on the same sort of like cosmic egg here. So uh, it's just so beautiful. I, I love it so much. And they form the shape of a heart, 35. 
breaking down to an eight. So for me, that is always like past life connection. This is your soul family, your soul tribe. So, uh, you know, something may be really paying off for you. Uh, this could be like an opportunity or something coming to fruition because you have such a loyal heart. Other people have seen that. Maybe someone like comes out of nowhere and is like, you know what? You really helped me out. Now I'm going to help you out. They see your heart. They saw your how loyal you were, how true you were, um, you know, that you really uh, stuck by them, that you really helped them out. So beautiful energy. This could be talking about your family, you know, that they're so loyal to you. Um, just that like you've got support. You really have support this week and it's coming in. It's, it's going to show itself. Um, yes, this is what I was feeling at the bottom of the deck is change in the wind. And I'm telling you, I woke up like yesterday morning or the morning before and I felt it. I was like, okay, yep. There's, there's been a shift. It was like overnight. Um, so really nice number 12. Uh, and I don't know the energy of the zebra. It's not all black and white, you know, look for the gray areas because, um, like I said, nothing is set in stone is what I'm hearing this week. There's going to be like some kind of an opportunity. There's change in the air. The energy is shifted. Uh, some of the denser energy has been lifted. Perhaps you've even felt it yourself. So please drop me a comment if that resonates for you. All right. So let's get, um, some tarot and I am using the ethereal visions tarot this is by Matt Hughes and I just got this on Amazon it's really lovely it has a beautiful uh, glow to it it's sort of gold foiled and it's very etheric and uh, very airy and very light so let's see where we go with this all right here we go Highest and best messages for the collective for the week ahead. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, angels. Thank you, guides. And thank you to ourselves because our energy drives these readings forward as well. So uh, we are a part of this 100%. Highest and best messages, please. Yeah, the Page of Wands just came out. It is that new energy. It's fire, the Sagittarius energy uh, with the Fool. You can't make this up, you guys. I'm telling you. Um, and the Knight of Cups at the bottom. Yeah, Page of Wands, Aries here. Actually, double Aries. So perhaps for some of you, think back to Aries season. Is there anything from like April? Uh, that you've been, you know, that you've been working on or that you were really thinking about, you really wanted to manifest, um, that may, maybe you're looking at again, there may be an opportunity to revisit that. And if not, it is just about new inspiration. Uh, I think the last collective reading that I did where, you know, I was sitting here, I was talking about the fool and I had like a big download about this card about like, uh, who were you before the world told you who you were? Like, who did you want to be before society told you who you were supposed to be? That's this energy. It's totally inspired. It's ready to jump. It's ready to leap. It's the zero point. It's zero. You know, it's nothingness where everything is possible. It's the womb of creation. It's a masculine sign, you know, with Mars, but it's also a feminine energy for me because it represents the womb of creation. So beautiful fire energy. This week, you're going to be fired up. Whatever it is that you are like looking to leap into, um, you know, luck is on your side. So you can take some risks this week is what I'm hearing. You can definitely take some risks. Um, whatever that inspiration is, <coughs> excuse me, whatever that drive is. Um, and I'm going to have a sip. I... I'm drinking coffee because I got this new creamer tonight at Safeway and uh, it's so delicious that I wanted to have a cup of coffee. So, okay, cheers. Um, bottom of the deck, the Knight of Cups. You know, this is the lover, you know, this is the lover, Cancer, Cancer energy, uh, Cancer or Pisces, Scorpio. Anyway, it's that water energy and this is the romantic guy, you know, this is the knight in shining armor. He pursues his dreams. What's in his heart space? What does he love? What do you love? Um, there, this may be a great week for love, for passion, 
You know, it may be a very sexy week. It may be a very romantic week. Uh, if you're single, this could signify someone new, you know, being asked out on a date, something romantic. Uh, and if not, I feel like this creativity, this page of wands with the Knight of Cups, like you're going to be inspired to create something, to write something, to cook something, to draw something, uh, to make some music. Like it's just going to be a very inspired week. The Knights are on a mission. So it's about movement, you know, and with that Aries energy of the fool, it's about movement, uh, traveling light. You're bringing your, your, your fire with you and you're bringing your heart with you, that loyal heart, you know, this energy of the loyal heart. He's the dreamer. So this week, it really is about your dreams. Uh, and perhaps like for the past couple of weeks or however long that's been for you, you may have been feeling like perhaps in a slump, um, you know, or just that the energies were moving very slowly, that you had to process a lot, you were integrating some things. And, um, and so if you haven't felt the shift yet, it's coming, you guys, it's coming. So let's see. I want to get you a message. We will get some more tarot um, from the Sacred Creators Oracle deck. This is a great Oracle deck by Chris Ann, and she's the one that did the Lightseers tarot uh, and the Muse tarot. So she's just she's the bomb. She's amazing. Um, so let's get you a message from the Sacred Creators. They're sort of positive affirmation type things, uh, but they have some really cool messages. So thank you, Spirit. Highest and best message for the collective. Okay. Ooh, I think I'm actually going to read from this. Sacred Mirrors came out, number 33. And the threes have really been like everywhere for me lately. Uh, so let's see. Sacred Mirrors, number 33. Okay. Uh, seeing the divinity in others. Knowing more about yourself by sharing your gifts and talents. And um, a finding kindred souls on a similar path, collaborative opportunities, being seen, witnessing sacred evolution, connectedness, oneness, your place among the stars. Right? Amazing. Um, so on the shadow side, this can be like where, you know, you're really triggered. It's like that mirror where you're seeing like, all the things in other people that uh, are your pet peeves, things that really bother you, trigger you, annoy you, uh, people's ability to push your buttons very easily, um, allowing someone else's journey to affect your self-worth, not recognizing the lessons that other people can give you. So the mirror can be, we can look in the mirror one day and be like, oh, I look great. And then like the next day, we're like, oh, I look horrible. It's the same thing. So, um, you know, this week you get to choose uh, what you see in the world. Okay. You get to choose this week what you see in the world is the message that I'm getting for this. The mirrors are all around. Uh, we connect to other souls on this planet and every single interaction, no matter how great or how tiny, can carry a message or a meaning. Okay. So, um, Let's see if there's anything else because I, I want to try to keep this not so long because you guys know I can go on and on. How are the people you've been spending time with mirrors of you? Do they make your life better? Explore opportunities to try new things, the fool, and take risks, the fool, <laughs> by communicating in a new way. Allow your community to be a mirror and to show you what works best. I love this. I think that that was so appropriate, so beautiful. Thank you, Chris Ann, for this amazing deck. Um, and I'll just show you, let's get one more, just because it's such a fun deck and it's really colorful. And I love the very, very simple artwork, but it has like very powerful messages. When I got it, I didn't realize uh, how powerful these messages were gonna be. So you got two, the sacred flow of yes. Say yes this week, you guys, say yes. This week is a week to say yes. Luck is on your side, release the negativity. The fool, the fool says yes, you know? And that's why he's seen as the fool because sometimes he makes mistakes. He hasn't learned the lessons yet, you know? So he's gonna make mistakes. Um, allow yourself to make a mistake. Now, 
you know, you have to, um, the message isn't the message. It's your reaction to it. That's the message. So if you're watching this and you're like, and you already know of something that may be coming your way and it's a no go for you, no way, then that's your message. Um, but with luck being on your side and releasing negativity, the, you know, it, this is a week for many of you to say yes to life, to say yes to being happy, to say yes to, um, a date perhaps uh, with this, with this Knight of Cups, you know, whatever that looks like, your partner may ask you to do something totally insane and you're like going to say yes, you know, uh, and then we get the energy and that's a number 30. So there's those threes coming up. Um, was I talking about the threes? Yeah. So we have three, 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 because this is a number 30, three, three, three plus zero. So plus the number of the fool and, um, and zero is the God number, you know, the God, the goddess, it's a number of source. So three, 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 and zero. It's really amazing. Uh, with a number four, you are epic. You are epic. Here's the energy of the sun. This is the solar plexus. It is that Aries energy, you know, the energy of fire in the solar plexus. You may be spending some quality time in the sun this week. You know, we're in fire season here in northern Arizona. We've had uh, a fire that's been burning and is now 50% contained. It's it's going to be okay. We're very happy about that. We've been getting some rain, so all of our prayers for rain have been working, but um, you're epic. So that's the energy of, like, the fool. The fool doesn't know anything, and he... Like the fool comes in, he could be somebody without much. He doesn't have a partner. He doesn't have a wife or kids. He doesn't have a big fat bank account. He doesn't have social status. He doesn't have all of the wisdom. But let me tell you something. This guy, he thinks he's epic. He doesn't even think it. He knows it. So it's just about that. It's about lightening up releasing that negativity luck is on your side say yes uh go out and and um explore these mirrors what mirror are you going to be looking at and seeing this week it's such an amazing reading with just nine cards that was just nine cards um let's get you an angel message i don't even know that we'll pull more tarot i don't want to make this too long and keep you guys uh sitting here forever so thank you to the angels what is the message for the collective for the week ahead? Thank you, angels. Highest and best message for the collective for the week ahead. And this is going to be an angel prayer that for those of you that would like a short angel prayer for the week ahead. Ooh, nice. We got spirit animal. I love that. Look at this energy here. Really beautiful. We see like this uh, shaman or warrior, Native American shaman and warrior. And behind him is the energy of the raven um, or even the hawk. Yeah, the hawk maybe. Um, I was seeing a hawk outside in my backyard just yesterday. He made a, an appearance. It looked like a red-tailed hawk. Thank you, Animal Kingdom, for blessing my path with love. So this week, look out for the signs from your animal totems. You may really be seeing, you know, the hummingbirds, the butterflies, uh, just to follow, so that you know that spirit is around you. Spirit may come to you this week through animal totems. Uh, and this could even be speaking to like some of your pets, okay? And then at the bottom of the deck is the Divine Father. This is Shiva energy. Divine Father, thank you for co-creating my world with me. Inner power. This is amazing. Um, and it's the Sri Yantra. So look at that energy, you guys. Uh, you know, Om Namah Shivaya. It's, it's beautiful. It really is. Uh, that's this energy of the Aries, the fool, you know, the solar plexus, the inner sun, the divine masculine coming out in this reading to have confidence, be assertive, luck is on your side, take a chance, say yes, say yes to uh, something great and, and believe it, you know, so it's just a really, really nice message. Um, 
I don't even know that we need anything else. Okay, since it's cancer season, I will pull a message from the mermaids uh, and get some water energy because it's funny, this is such a fiery uh, reading during cancer season, right? It's super fiery. Um, all right, thank you, spirit. Thank you, angels. Thank you, guides, for this beautiful reading. One last message uh, from the mermaids for the collective for the week ahead. Farewell to the moon. Appreciate and enjoy the lunar light and cycles, number 17, if that number means anything to you. 17 is often a lucky number for a lot of people. I know it's been a number that's followed me around uh, throughout my life. So let's see what this has to say. Um, I'm going to read from the book on this, and then I will leave you to go about your day or your night. So let's see. Farewell to the moon. Um, all right, so I'll get you, um, it's about connecting with the moon. It's about connecting with the goddess. So we have the energy of the masculine with Shiva and the sun. And now we have the energy of the feminine coming in to balance out this reading. Um, it really is about connecting with the moon, connecting with the divine feminine. Even if you don't resonate with the energy of the moon, I know some people don't. Um, just connecting in with the energy of the feminine within you. So it is as natural as breathing out and breathing in and to sink in we need to do nothing but live. You are now being called to live in deeper partnership with the cycles of lunar sea so that the magic of your life becomes fuller, deeper, richer, so that you live with more ease, flow, courage, and gratitude. Like the moon, you shine and you dim. So you shine and you dim. It's that cyclical energy, right? The highs and the lows. You grow and you shrink. All these things are taught by the simple observation of walking, swimming, dwelling in the oceanic magics by moonlight. If we learn to yield and capitulate, set the tone, lead, and allow another to take control at times, all will be well. This dance is echoed in the varying shapes of the moon as she yields to darkness, then grows in brightness each month. I love this. Um, as women bleed their oceanic bloods each lunar month, 13 moons, right? The number 13, the divine feminine. So for those of you who would like this week, observe the moon under her light, withdraw with her darkening, know that her phase was at the moment you first drew breath. Know what her phase was at the moment you first drew breath. That's really an interesting uh, topic about like, you know what your moon sign is, but do you know like what phase the moon was in when you were born? Uh, and that may be something to look into. Uh, it need not be complex. The simple connection will change you so that your true essence can come forth and be known by the world. So it is this sort of energy of, like I said, it's just like going with the flow. Like if the energy feels heavy, then it's heavy and you may have to just rest and like, kind of like deal with it. Uh, but I feel, I'm telling you, I, I that's why I came on. I felt this uh, shifting of the energy and uh, it's here. There's been a lot of shifts, you know, and so we have the masculine and the feminine coming in very strongly. Last two messages of the reading. So um, I really love it. I think it's, it's going to be a great week ahead. Yep, there's the balance uh, that was uh, underneath the Lord Shiva or the Divine Masculine is uh, that balance energy. So anyway, um, those are your messages. I was going to get a fairy card. Um, if you want to stick around, I'm going to pull a uh, a card from this deck that, like I said, I haven't um, used in readings yet, but I've been uh, working with it just myself. So, um, let's get a message. So this is called The Fairy's Oracle. It's by Brian Froud, and the text is by Jessica Macbeth. And uh, it's really magical. It's really different. It's unlike any fairy deck I've ever seen. Uh, Brian Froud is sort of like a very renowned expert on the fairies. And um, 
this uh, this card is the topsy turvies, uh, and this helps us. This is the front of all of them, but the topsy turvies they sort of help us see things from all different angles, and they can sort of like turn things upside down for us so that we see things from different angles. Isn't that funny, you guys? All right, so um, let's get a message from this from this deck. Um, all right. All right, you guys, so um, I'm just gonna ring the fairy bell. And I've got some fuchsite here, which is a fairy stone for me. So thank you to the fairies. What would you like us to know for the week? All right. So to the fairy kingdom, thank you for being here. What would you like my viewers to know? The highest and best message for all of us for the week ahead regarding this reading. I was waiting for one to flip over. So we got, um, we got two, okay. Okay, um, let's just see what we have here. Okay. Hmm. So we got number 50 and number 42. And I'm just gonna show you their pictures. Yeah, they're really different, right? Looks like a wise old fairy elder here. Okay. So for those of you who are still here, awesome. For those who have clicked off, I totally get it. And these are cards that have not come out for me yet since I've been working with this deck. So his name is Arvel Parrot Communication. Okay, so this may be a week of communication, you guys. Someone may be coming in that Knight of Pen uh, the Knight of Cups and the Loyal Heart. But anyway, um, okay, so this is about our throat chakra. Arvel is his name and parrot. So think about how parrots repeat and they speak and they're very vocal and they sing. So this, this fairy, Arvel, he points to the light in his throat chakra. Uh, in esoteric lore, the energy center at the throat is about communication. Fairies are great communicators, though not necessarily in words as we use them. They speak through words, of course, but they also speak through the rustle of the leaves, the pattern of clouds in the sky, the way flower petals fall. They tickle us with touches almost too subtle to feel, with touches um, trying to get our attention, and they sometimes speak through our dreams and our daydreams. Their communications are something like those of cats, partly verbal, part body language, part telepathy, and part pure fairy. <laughs> Arvel says that we humans can semaphore each other. That's a word I haven't heard before. We can semaphore each other uh, by flashing the lights in our throat centers. So this, for those of you watching, you're going to be resonating with this. Like, have you ever thought about emanating the light within your throat chakra to communicate with others? In fact, he says we do do that uh, and read the messages on an unconscious level, right? which is one of the ways we pick up on the unspoken feelings and thoughts of each other. Arvel also says, um, and I agree, that almost any situation can be improved by people listening to each other, and that listening is, a half, full of, is, is half of good communication, of course. The other half, of course, is speaking truly and clearly. Some people use speech as a game, or as a test for others to see if they can puzzle out the meaning. And this is fairly fun, as long as actual communication doesn't matter. When it does though, it is very helpful if we try for clarity at the very least, and hopefully wisdom as well. Arvel has many wise sayings to help us. And here are some of Arvel's sayings. Our little fairy friend here, I love him. Uh, it takes two to say yes, just say yes. It takes two to say yes, 
but only one to say no. That's interesting. Uh, where the stream is shallowest, greatest is the noise. Ain't that the truth? Um, he that always complains is never pitied. Better than gold is a tale rightly told. Tis easier to give advice than to take it. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> From the place where deer are not, they're not easy to be got. Whoever burns his bottom must himself sit on it. <laughs> I like this guy. Well, enough of that. Arvel reminds us that good, clear communication is sometimes hard work. It requires elbow grease because the elbows are the secondary energy centers to the throat. Okay, I never knew that. That's amazing. He wishes you to know that his elbows are well greased. So, uh, in the reading, clear communications are vitally important here. Strive for verbal brilliance. Listen carefully. Be articulate. Be willing to calmly debate the issues and explore ideas with others. Open communication will enhance the chances of success all around. Arvel also suggests that the querent watch for body language, incomplete sentences, and unfinished thoughts, and try to discover what these signals are meant to get across. Wow, you guys. Wow. Amazing. I love him. Um, okay, so let's uh, go to number 42. And um, I want to tell you what kind of a fairy he is because there are categories in here. Uh, let's see. He is a helpline. So there's the helpline troop and he's part of the helpline troop. So this is part of the help that's coming in this week, the support, uh, that loyal heart that I was talking about. Like I felt like there was some kind of support. Um, so he is the helpline troop. And then number 42, Okay, Mike the Myomancer. Okay, I'm in love with him. And he is also part of the Helpline troupe. So in this book, we have the Singer of the Realms, which are really amazing. We have the She, uh, spelled S-I-D-H-E. They're like the lords and ladies of the fairies, although they don't like to be called that. Then we get fairy guides and guardians, uh, the Helpline troupe, and then there's the fairy challengers. So. In this deck, they're not all, you know, um, the happy fairies. Some of them uh, are very sort of mischievous because they're there to challenge you uh, when they feel that you need it. So uh, we get the helpline troop. So this great support that I was feeling, luck is on your side, you know, that's coming in from these guys. Okay, so Mike, M-Y-K, the Myomancer. I love him. I'm like so in love with him. He looks very camouflaged. Small, uh, okay, small clues, details, the messages everywhere, and patience. So the Myomancer reads the past, present, and potential of all beings in the movements of mice. What? Mike is particularly fond of reading the movements of field mice as they are livelier and better fed than church mice. Mike could learn the same things by reading berries or the patterns made by fallen leaves or any one of a billion other things, but his specialty is mice. So he's sort of like the mice whisperer and he's kind of like a psychic, like the way that people read coffee. If you get a coffee reading or tea leaves, that kind of thing, or the way that leaves fall on the ground, like he was saying. Okay, so um, he can learn endless things from the way they twitch their whiskers and hold their tails. That's that body language. He sees hidden information in the patterns of growth and, and coloration in their fur, the way the wind rumples it and how they are preen and how they preen themselves. Little things can tell us a lot. Everything bears messages about the universe around us. Studying the details sometimes enables us to deduce the whole. The entire universe is one piece and each fragment of that one unity reflects and is connected to all the others. That famous philosopher Anonymous once said, the lifting of a finger disturbs the farthest star. That's funny, I put this uh, Michelangelo shirt on today. The lifting of a finger 
The lifting of one finger disturbs the farthest star. That's pretty amazing. Um, okay, where am I? Mike says it works the other way around too. He advises us to make a slow and observant study of the little things and their even smaller details in the world around us. He says that such study not only helps us enhance our understanding of life, unity, and everything, but it also helps us to develop a joyful patience and a deeper philosophy. So um, it's interesting because the uh, energy of Sagittarius is about the big picture. And here we sort of get into like the energy of Gemini about really analyzing and looking at the details. So starter reading. Attention to detail is important at this time. Little things are not only important in themselves, but they also give you an import, important information about the larger things. Look for the inner hidden meaning in ordinary objects, happenings, and experiences. Life is trying to teach you something by speaking to you gently. With luck and application, you will get the message before it has to speak to you more loudly. Yeah. Body language in humans as well as mice may give you very useful information at this present time, especially if you learn to read it properly. The clues to the answers you seek and the things you need to know are all around you. You are surrounded by omens, portents, and signs, but the signs are not written on billboards in large letters. They are in the small happenings of your life. Be awake and be aware. Hint, if you work out what the question really is, it is much easier to recognize the answer when it comes. Um, and it's interesting too, because it really is speaking to keeping your instincts sharp uh, and when we talk about the fool sort of like being in that void of nothingness, uh, not having learned any of the lessons, the one thing that the fool does have is very, very sharp, keen instincts, right? So um, that's sort of like both of these cards, we're talking about body language and being observant. They're both about communication. So that's going to be important this week is communication and also just the way that you observe everything uh, using your instincts, really using your instincts, um, noticing little things this week. Uh, so anyway, you guys, that was the message. Uh, if you stuck around for the fairy messages, I just want to say thank you to Mike, the Myomancer, and Arvel the Parrot, or Arvel Parrot. Thank you so much for showing up in this reading for the collective. I'm so happy that I used this deck. Um, if you like this, you know, definitely uh, give it a thumbs up, and I will use this deck more as I am getting to know it. We can get to know it together. Um, so also, I want to mention that if you would like to book a personal session with me, I have openings this month uh, going into July, so please reach out to me. You can find me at elizabethlight1111 at gmail.com. Please, it just even for inquiries, if you mention this video, I will give you a discount as well, and we can talk about different formats and pricing. Uh, and if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's Elizabeth Light Tarot. And I think that'll do it, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. I love you so very much. Take good care, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, namaste.